Hey, what's up you guys? You're watching Team APS, Paul here. And in today's video, I wanted to bring you guys' attention to three cards that I feel could actually be like meta relevant cards, whether in the side deck or whether as tech cards. These are cards that are already out and have just kind of gone under the radar, but I read them and I see so much potential in these cards. So I felt like I would, you know, just talk about it and maybe in the video, you guys can share some other similar cards that you've read that you feel like oh, this card's close to being good. And in fact, all the cards on this list probably will be used. And I've even actually seen them used like here and there, but they just haven't quite hit the mainstream yet, I guess. So uh, I'll start off with the first one, Inspector Border. So of all the cards on this list, this one actually has probably seen the most use already. It came out in Extreme Force and it's a really interesting card. It's surprisingly cheap, first of all, even though it's a secret rare, so that's pretty cool, but its effect basically stops either player from using monster effects as long as they have used more monster effects than the number of monster types on the field between Link, Pendulum, Xyz, Synchro, Fusion, and I think Ritual. It's a kind of weirdly worded effect, but the gist is if there aren't any, say, Link monsters or something on the field, then neither player gets to use card effects, or monster effects, rather. So you can summon this guy out and just kind of stun your opponent because as long as inspector board is on the field, they can't use hand traps. They can't use, you know, of course, their own just regular monster effects. And in a game where that's kind of the way that most decks function is just through monster effects, that oftentimes means that they won't actually be able to start their plays. This card reminds me of something like Thunder King Ryo or something like Dinko Seka, where it just gets summoned and it just gives your opponent a hard time. It's best used in stun decks, I feel, because you know those are gonna be the decks that aren't gonna need to use a lot of other monster effects themselves. They'll be combining this with cards like Banisher of the Radiance or Fossil Dyna, where those effects don't activate and that just makes it harder and harder for your opponent. I mean, there have been Inspector Border stun decks that work perfectly fine. I mean, they've managed to top regionals in the last several months. So I think that this card definitely shines in those decks. Um, but I mean, even so, you could probably side this in a lot of other different decks. And the best part about it is some decks are just hard pressed to actually deal with the card. If they don't have a kaiju to tribute over it, then they're kind of just stuck. Most decks are not running cards like Raigeki anymore, cards like Dark Hole anymore. There's not really the spot removal in the game that we used to have. But this card isn't without a few downsides. I mean, if your opponent is ever able to summon a Link monster or something like that, then they'll be able to use a monster effect and that might be enough to get rid of this thing. Also, you can't special summon or normal summon Inspector Border while you control like other cards. So yeah, since you can't summon Inspector Border while you control any other monsters, it kind of means that, you know, it really is going to be a little bit limited in use. It's not the best top deck to have. It's not necessarily going to combo all that well with other cards like in a vacuum, I guess. So it's hard to say. I mean, I don't know that this will be like the tech card of the century, but it could still be a good side deck card. In fact, it reminds me of Amano Iwato, which is kind of popularly or infamously used in True Dracos to stop the opponent from drolling them or ashing them while they use their spells. It could be used for a similar purpose and it doesn't bounce to your hand at the end of the turn. Plus it's 2000 attack and defense, so it's kind of chunky and beefy and that's good. I don't know, what do you guys think about this card? I mean, it of the cards has seen the most use, so it kind of has proven its metal already. I think it'll only get better in the future. And it just got reprinted in the Mega Tens. So you should probably pick it up if you can. Card number two is Iron Dragon Tia Matten. So this card, when I first read it, I was like, whoa, this is actually really cool. I wanted to make a video about it sooner, but Iron Dragon Tia Matten. So if there are three or more cards in the same column, you can activate its effect, it's a quick effect, special summon it from your hand, and then destroy all the cards in the column it was summoned to. And then also, while it's on the field, unused cards in its column cannot be used. So or unused zones in its column cannot be used. So what this means is basically if your opponent has like lots of cards in a column, you can summon this anywhere you want. It could be that column or another one. Nuke the board there and then make it unable to be used. And that's so cool because this is a quick effect. This can effectively function like a hand trap. This could disrupt, you know, an opponent's combo. But what's even better than that is that you can technically use this card yourself if you want to. Because, you know, I was reading in a tournament report thread on Reddit where somebody was using this in an invoked deck like Mech Knight invoked and he was using like Brilliant Fusion so he could like you know use Brilliant Fusion and then summon like Gym Knight uh, Seraphonite in the extra monster zone and then like summon a 
Mech Knight, like Blue Sky, in that zone since there's two cars, you get a search. And then it allows him to also summon Iron Dragon any time during the opponent's turn to disrupt them because there's three cars in a column. And he can summon it wherever he wants, disrupt them, cut out their zones, and you can just summon it where the other extra monster zone is that hasn't been used yet. And you could potentially disrupt your opponent and just stop them from like ever using that extra monster zone. As long as you've got yours filled, they won't be able to use theirs. That's pretty strong. So it's definitely a pretty cool card. It can't be normal summon though. So like it's going to be kind of dead in your hand if it ever can't use its effect. Most decks can't really search this card. And it sometimes I feel like its purpose is better used with like just regular hand traps, Ghost Ogre, Ash Blossom, Droll. But maybe if those cards were to get hit on the ban list, who knows? Maybe this card could suddenly rise up and become a really relevant threat card. I mean, quick effect, all that stuff. It's pretty cool. I'd like to see it do more. So we'll see. And the third card is Mana Dragon Zernitron. So I was just recently like turned on to this card. I actually did not know what it was or what it did, but it came out in Cybernetic Horizon. And the way that it works is it's like a high level monster that's 2200 attack. But whenever one of your spell or trap cards gets sent off the field from an opponent's card effect, whether it's in your grave or banished, you can special summon this card from your graveyard or from your hand. Then when you special summon this card, you get to set a spell or trap that's in your graveyard or banished back to your field. Also, this gets banished when it leaves the field after that. But, so, let's talk about that for a second, right? This means if your opponent ever pops your cards, whether that's with, you know, MST, Cosmic Cyclone, it banishes, but this still works, you can summon this thing out from your hand or your grave, and then you get to set a card for free. That could be a power spell, that could be, you know, Monster Reborn, or Twin Twisters, or Soul Charge, something like that, right, Geki. Or it could be a trap, it could be like a Solemn card, or, you know, like a Torrental Tribute or Mirror Force. That's huge. I think the only reason that this card isn't, like, you know, doesn't have as much potential right now is just because Spell and Trap removal, unfortunately, isn't very big in the game right now, largely because back row and in general isn't very big in the game right now. So, this card struggles a bit because of that. But I feel like if the game were to change a bit, if Yu-Gi-Oh were to slow down at all, you know, and these types of cards became more prevalent, then this card in and of itself could also become quite strong. So, I don't know. It's new. Who's to say? Maybe it just needs more time, but I think it's a cool card. And the bonus pick goes to a new card actually coming out in Soul Fusion, Token Collector. So it's going to be the sneak peek promo for that set, which is great news. It means everybody can get their hands on it. But Token Collector can actually summon itself from the hand or the graveyard whenever tokens get summoned to the field. When it gets summoned, it destroys all the tokens in the field, and then neither player can summon tokens. So this is great. It's kind of like a counter to cards like Scapegoat, also Galaxy Tomahawk, Phantom Sky Blaster, you know, the typical token generators. So that means that if in the next ban list, maybe Konami decides not to hit, say, Scapegoat and cards like that, then this becomes a pretty decent check on them as well. And we all know that tokens have basically resulted in half of the link spam that this game has. So a way to deal with tokens and kind of lock your opponent out of ever summoning them is really cool. You can summon it from the grave too, which is nice. It means you get to kind of reuse this. And since it can summon from the hand, it can still function as a hand trap. I'm really interested in seeing where that card goes exactly. I mean, like with a lot of the cards in this list, it's a little risky it feels to like just tech this in the main deck. It'll probably be relegated to the side. But who knows? It just sounds interesting. So anyways, that's it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this brought to your attention some interesting cards that maybe you haven't thought about yet. Like I said, I could see all these cards becoming meta-relevant in some capacity over the next few months. It just all depends on the way the game flows, what the ban list looks like, what the format looks like, kind of how Konami shapes things. But let me know down in the comments, what do you think of these cards? And are there other similar cards that you've seen and read and thought about using that maybe you feel like are on the cusp, just on the cusp, of having potential. It's hard to say. It's gonna be it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Hit the notification bell so you'll know about all the new videos when they come out. And also you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter. It's gonna be it. I'll see you guys in the next video.